Hi guys, so I have a big old pile of petticoats that I was just getting out to gear up for the reenacting season here. We got a couple school days coming up and I realized that they're really looking kind of gross. So I decided that this is a perfect opportunity to do a little video on our newest bluing, which is our aniline bluing. So anilines kind of were invented in the 1850s, but as far as laundry work goes, they don't really make it to the forefront until around the 1870s. Um, and they gain a lot of popularity. And by the time we get to World War I, um, that's pretty much your go-to. So if you guys are doing World War I impressions, this aniline bluing is gonna be perfect for what you're doing. This particular recipe is an 1879 recipe, but the cool thing about the anilines is that they don't really change much from one recipe to the other. It's just the concentration that's different. Um, and this stuff is really concentrated compared to like our Prussian bluing that we have uh, uh, up in the shop. So where it takes like two tablespoons, like full tablespoons of the Prussian bluing, it's only gonna take like an eighth to a quarter teaspoon of the aniline bluing, kind of depending on how much water you have. I kind of go based off of two gallons because that's what's easiest for me. But um, whatever quantities you guys have would be fine. Um, it's really easy to just measure it out and pour it in. So aniline is like the only bluing that is actually water soluble, which makes the job of bluing a whole lot easier because you don't have to worry about all those blue specks. Aniline bluings can be a little bit uh, light sensitive, so make sure that if you do purchase this wonderful aniline bluing that you're going to keep it in a place where it's kind of out of the light. Uh, if you leave like your bluing water out, it's going to fade pretty quick and it will even fade from one garment to the next just because the garments just suck up so much of the pigment. And so it's okay to add more as you go. Uh, so historically, aniline was sold as like a powder or like a crystal form. And the recipe books would give the instructions on how to prepare it. The cool thing about us here at Metal Blossom Goods is we did the pre preparation for you. So it's liquid, it's ready to go. All you have to do is just take the cap off, measure out how much you need, and you're good to go. So um, makes that a little bit easier. So let's just go ahead and jump into bluing up some petticoats here. All right. So here we have a quarter teaspoon um, and it was kind of hard for me to get it out of the bottle without dumping a whole bunch in there. So we do have a full quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna try and put like half of it in and kind of see where we're at here. That is such a pretty color. I just cannot get over how beautiful this color is. But as you can see, a little bit definitely goes a long way. I mean, that was only a couple of drops. I'm going to grab uh, a whisk here so that we can. I think that those couple drops is great plenty. I don't think we're going to need much more than that. All right, so I'm gonna start with the dingiest petticoat that I have here. Now these are all wet. Um, I am not that comfortable bluing in the wash machine, okay? So these just came out of the wash machine and they are, oh, I left a safety pin in it. Um, and these are still wet, so I haven't dried them or anything. Gonna go ahead and submerge. We want to make sure that it's all, all covered. And then as we pull it out, we're gonna go ahead and wring it out as we go.
Oh, I can tell they look better already. <laughs> Now, a lot of our uh, manuals and stuff tell you to clap things, um, and this is basically just giving it a good old shake to make sure that you kind of have all the, everything kind of evenly distributed and it gets some of the water out. So there, we have a much nicer looking petticoat now. I really like how that turned out. It's a lot brighter than it was, that's for sure. So the next petticoat is going to go in. This is a huge petticoat. There's a lot of fabric in this one. It's a nice over petticoat with tucks and the whole bit in it. a while to wring this one out because there's just so much fabric here. Makes me wish I had a ringer washer right here in my kitchen where I could just run them through the ringer, but don't have one handy right now. You can see that the fabric has soaked up a lot of that pigment. See how light the water is already? So if you are doing a lot and you want to add a little bit more bluing, go right ahead. It's better to have, to kind of add as you go than to have too much in the beginning. Yeah, these are looking drawers here too. I'm not too worried about the drawers. They weren't too bad. This isn't exactly my best pair either. I just noticed that they could use some sprucing up. We hope that you enjoyed joining us for laundry day sort of here um we got i got all the petticoats done that i needed to get done and if you're interested in this product you can find it at www.meadowblossomgoods.etsy.com and uh, it will be in the laundry stuff section in the shop there so again this is our uh prepared aniline and um awesome cool vintage label here too so Happy laundry doing, happy bluing, and um, check back here on this channel to see more cool historical laundry tidbits. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.